kiss. The memory of a kiss. <laughs> That's where I wanted to start. The memory of a kiss. The memory of a kiss. So why? Okay, so the, I think the memory of a kiss is interesting, right? Because you ask people, what's your first memory? Right? So that's a, a childhood thing. You might remember uh, something with your mother or some, some, something that happened in your childhood, something really won wonderful and warm. Uh, and then the next kind of memory we fast forward to, I mean, I guess kids grow up faster these days, but uh, is the memory of your first kiss, something that happens when you're becoming more of an adult. Uh, and it's um, emotionally laden. Uh, it may be seared into your memory. So uh, I, use that, I use that example in my book. I, I talk about, um, um, well, I guess the idea of the connectome uh, is the complete map of all the neural connections in your brain. So the brain contains 100 billion neurons, and every neuron might have uh, 10,000 connections. And so imagine this map of connections. Oh, actually, I'm not really bringing it alive. Imagine, you know how when you go on those airline flights and the food is really awful these days? <laughs> so you can't really get any pleasure out of that. So you pick up a magazine, you start reading it, flipping through it, and the stories aren't that good. And you don't really want to watch any of the movies. And finally, in the last page, there's a, a, a flight map, right? The three-letter codes, of the, you have the airports, the cities, and you have the routes between the cities. Now imagine each one of those cities is replaced by a neuron, and each one of those flights between a city is a connection. And imagine representing your brain as a map like that with 100 billion cities and 10,000 flights per city. There's a map like that for your entire brain, and that's called your connectome. Uh, and so one of the hypotheses that we would like to test in neuroscience is the idea that somehow your memories, such as the memory of your first kiss, um, are stored in this gigantic pattern of connections inside that map. We know the memory is there because we're all thinking of it. But where did it come from is a place. And you hypothesize That's right. that the memory is retrievable well, certainly it's retrievable, but that there is a material basis for that memory. So what accounts for the fact that, I guess Tim was telling us that our memories are very, um, are very fragile. But actually, some memories are so persistent, right? There's some things that happen in your life that you will never forget. And it, it's kind of a paradox, right? Because perceptions feel so real in the moment. But the feeling of what's happening is so ephemeral. It's just in, it's very real at one point, and then it just vanishes uh, the next second, next minute, and so on. But your memories, they don't feel real when you recall them. They don't feel as real as perceptions. They feel hazy. They feel indistinct. And yet it's the memories that endure for a lifetime. Right? So you see somebody uh, from your high school class, you haven't seen them in, in decades, and all of a sudden you just, you just remem remember them. And so what could be responsible for that, uh, that persistence? And one of the great uh, hypotheses for neuroscience is that there's a material basis for that persistence. That somehow uh, it's, uh, it's really some kind of impression that was left uh, by your experiences. I guess Plato uses the metaphor, the Greek philosopher Plato uses the metaphor of the wax tablet. That somehow um, your memories are inscribed on a, on a metaphorical tablet inside your head.